welcome to this third session on um, information utility regulations. We now go to duties of IUs. IU is the short form for information utility. An IU shall provide services with due care and reasonable skill, uh, care, skill and due diligence. IU shall hold information as custodian. Please star this. Non-discrimination, please star. And IU shall provide services without discrimination on the basis of residence, place of business, type of personality. So you should not discriminate. That's what it means. Nature of place of business, residence, type of personality, natural or artificial. So you can't say for a company I will charge so much, for an individual I will charge so much. You technically can't discriminate. Other duties, it shall provide services to a user based on its explicit consent, guarantee protection of rights of users, Procedures and facilities to ensure that records are protected against loss or destruction. Secured system for data flow. Protect its data processing systems against unauthorized access, alteration, destruction. Transfer all information submitted by a user and stored with it to another information utility on the request of the user. Please star F. Looks a bit different. Okay. Now, the second part which is 30... 2 is very important. So you can in fact double star it. An IU shall not outsource the provision of its core services, which is accepting, safe recording, authenticating and verifying, providing access. This four cannot be outsourced. It cannot, it shall not use the information stored with it for providing any services other than for which it has got prior approval of the board. 3. It cannot seek data or details of users except as required for the provision of services. These three are very, very important. You can't say, oh, I'm, I've got the data, so I'll start some other service. You can't do that. Similarly, you cannot outsource the provision of core services. Insurance, important. And IU shall make adequate arrangements, including insurance, for indemnifying users for losses, losses that may be caused to them by any wrongful act, negligence or default. Of the information utility, employees or any other person whose services are used for the provision of services under this regulation. Fee, please star this. IU shall charge same uniform fee for providing the same service to different users. Two, where the service is the same, the fee shall be the same. Two, it shall publish the fee structure on its website. 3. Where it proposes to increase the fees for provision of its services within 3 months, at least 3 months before the date of making that fee increase effective. See here it does not say change, it says proposed increase only it says. So please star the increase. Within 3, three months before the date of increase of fees is, reflect, is affected, the fee shall be a reasonable reflection of the service provided. And again, they have provided one more. Fee for access cannot be higher than fee for submission. So you, you make people submit very cheap and then you make the access very expensive. You can't do that. Okay. This is the restriction. It can be equal or lesser. So submission fee cannot be less than accessing fee. <laughs> okay. Then the information utility shall establish an appropriate risk management framework for reliable, recoverable and secure systems, provision of core services during disasters and emergencies, star that, BCP, during including disaster recovery sites. What's the biggest risk to an IU? Loss of data, theft of data. Theft of data, how do I protect? Secure systems, reliable, recoverable, secure systems. Loss of data, and the third one is ongoing operation. So theft of data, loss of data, ongoing operation. All these three my risk management framework should ensure. Audit. Please star this. And I shall appoint an external auditor having a relevant qualification to audit its IT framework, interface and data processing systems. It's an annual. He shall submit a report. Okay, it does not use the term annual here, but let's just go through this. It shall appoint every year. It uses the term every year. So, please write in 34, it is an annual audit. Annual audit 
by an IT external auditor with relevant qualification to audit their framework interface and data processing. Auditor submitted shall appointed shall be submit the report to the governing board. IU shall submit a report received along with the comments of the governing board to the board to IBBI. So audit reports shall be submitted to IBBI along with the comments and remarks of the uh, 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 IU to the audit report submitted by the external auditor. See again it says external auditor. You cannot say I have my own internal audit department I will do it. No. The auditor has to be external to the entity. Preservation policy. The IU shall have a preservation policy for information stored with it details of transactions and it shall be consistent with the technical standards. If you remember the last two technical standards dealt with preservation and purging of information. Provision of information to the board. So an IU shall provide such information as may be required by the board but it shall also provide an annual report. See there is an annual report, an annual IT audit. Okay, What all will the annual report give? It will give number of types of records, number and types of users, number and type of debt, number and type of security interest, volume of debt, volume of secure debt, number and instances and types of defaults, disputes, number of times information was accessed by the adjudicating authority. How many times did NCLT use my IU? Because it says no, NCLT when it receives an application shall establish the default either through the IU or on the basis of evidence presented. Any other information as may be required by the board. Inspection without prejudice to sections 217 to 220, the board shall inspect an IU. In fact, if you go to the inspection and uh, investigation regulation, there are two kinds of investigations and there are two kinds of inspection. One is it says it shall generally conduct an inspection and two it is an inspection which is pursuant to a complaint. So that's what here it says. It can it shall inspect an information utility with such periodicity. It's a casual inspection as it may deem necessary. And anybody has to give who's getting inspected, the IU has to give support and cooperation. Then we come to chapter 7, which is services to IPs. So, incidentally, if you remember, in the IP segment, we read somewhere that he has to store a record of all his proceedings either with himself or with an IU. So that's where here the IU gives it there is a uh, the, the customer and the service provider. So IU can also be a service provider to an IP. An IP may submit report registers and minutes in respect of any insolvency resolution liquidation or bankruptcy proceedings to the IU for storage. IU shall not provide access to any person other than the concerned IP who has submitted, the board or the adjudicating authority. Star it. Creditor cannot take access to all this. Only three parties. The IU shall discharge the duties specified in chapter 6 in respect of everything. So what was chapter 6? All the duties of the IU, whatever was their duty, that same duty will apply also not only an information furnished by a data creditor but also information submitted by an, an RP on his proceedings. And then we come to surrender or cancellation of registration. Before we go to surrender or cancellation, this is not specified elsewhere but an IU needs to have an exit management plan. So which shall include Transfer of information from the current IU to the new IU to another IU expeditiously. Mechanism for preservation and transfer of information. So the user must be able to transfer. Two, preservation and transfer. Three, timelines and cost estimation. And if you are amending the exit management plan, it cannot be done without the prior approval of the board. Just like your amendment to your bylaws. Then we came to surrender of registration. IU can give a surrender, giving the reasons for the surrender, pending and ongoing activities and how the exit management plan shall be implemented. Within 7 days, it shall publish a notice that he wants to surrender. 
ask for objections within 14 days and within 30 days of receipt of last objection it shall accept the surrender of registration it shall the all this is done by the board and the board shall publish a notice on the website that this particular iu has actually surrendered their registration it is the same process okay so uh, which is applicable within 7 days of request received from the iu they will place on the website who will place on the website board they will say you can all submit your objections anybody has an objection within 14 days from the last date of receipt of objection within 30 days they will record the surrender and they will place it on the website of ibbi saying this person has surrendered then we go to disciplinary proceedings see i think it's very important that you once again go through these regulations setting one out against the other ipa ip and iu particularly ipa and iu why because both these are regulated entities under the code so it says based on the findings of an information or investigation or a prima facie material available on record material co moto where the board is of a primary opinion prima facie opinion that it can take any of the actions under section 220 which is 2345 it shall issue a show cause notice what does it say about the show cause notice the same thing that we said earlier right why am i issuing the show cause notice what is the offense what are the facts how should you respond to the show cause notice within what time should you respond to the show cause notice what are the consequences of non response to the show cause notice all this is typically what is recorded in a show cause notice he shall respond to the show cause notice the other party will be given a reasonable opportunity of being heard the iu they shall pass an order a reasoned order with due cognizance of natural justice reasoned order in adherence to principles of natural justice star that dc shall endeavor to dispose within six months order can provide for warning suspension no action 222345 or a reference to take action under 225 the order passed so I, I, let me just come back what are the options either i can take no action or it can be a warning or it can be 222 which is suspension or cancellation 223 monetary penalty 224 disgorgement 225 restitution and if you remember under the earlier regulation that we had covered there was restitution how do you do restitution through a public notice correct that was covered in the inspection regulation if you recollect right that was the last part of the investigation and inspection regulation where they said you can have restitution see just as the way i am going through this you must immediately go to that regulation because it will just help you to register this whole reading much 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 better so when you are talking about restitution it said 30 30 30 they have to submit their claim within 30 days within 30 days we have to confirm who is getting how much and within 30 days we have to disburse so this is we are now back to iu regulation for a minute i went back to the inspection and investigation regulation so we go back to the iu regulation the order passed shall not become effective until 30 days and uh, uh, unless uh, the DC otherwise states in the order appeal has to go to NCLAT within 30 days under the NCLT rules within this framework you have two schedules uh, sorry two forms 
or rather uh, the schedule prescribes what are all the forms in relation to an IU. The first form is application for registration A, B certificate of registration, C manner of submission of information to an IU. It says information may be accepted in this form. So that is your form C for an IU regulation. So with this we close IU regulations also. Okay. That's about it. And please remember open IU, open IP, IPA, read it together. There will be a lot of similarities.